What is up guys? We are here today on Beaver Lake to do four hours of offshore bass fishing live, hopefully. We are basically going to try out a brand new recording setup that I have here. I don't know if this is actually going to work the whole time. The plan is to spend four hours. I don't know what the battery life's gonna be like, the internet, everything like that. This is a complete experiment. So maybe this video won't even make it up to YouTube. Fingers crossed it does. I am recording it too, so I might just post it later as well uh, as a full video once we get done. But the cool thing about my new setup is I actually can show you guys my live scope, I can show you my fish finder, all of that stuff. So we're gonna go out here, we're gonna try to find some beaver lake bass. I was out here last week and there were more fish moving offshore. I'm actually on a spot where I left them biting last time. So we're gonna graph it, take a look, see if the fish are still there. And then we're just gonna keep trying to find some fish. Beaver Lake is a very challenging lake, especially this time of year. Fish are very scattered, they're suspended. And honestly, if I can catch two or three fish over three pounds, that would be an amazing day. Really, my goal is just to catch one three pound bass. I'll probably catch a bunch of little fish just because there's a lot of small ones in the lake. But if I can catch just two to three, or even just one three pound bass, I'm gonna be very happy to on Beaver Lake. We're not like on a Texas reservoir where there's 10 pounders everywhere. So three pounder here on Beaver is a really good one. We're gonna try that though. So let me make sure everything is working here. Um, is everything working okay? Let me know on the stream. I don't know if it's actually like working properly leave a comment down there and we're going to try it and then i'm also going to get on the deal i'm having someone else watch too so you might hear a call if this is not working but we're just getting this started let's see if this works but i'm gonna switch over to this different view and hopefully we can get rolling Okay, there we go. Now you guys should be able to see me, I'm hoping, uh, on this view. I'm gonna put my life jacket on. And before we do that, actually, let me go jump in here. Just give me half a second. Want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of the Fish the Moment live stream, first on the water live stream edition, Bridgeford Foods. You guys heard me talk about it before. Now I'm gonna crack open a bag of Bridgeford while I start graphing here, because one, I'm getting a little bit hungry, and two, why not? We're gonna be graphing for maybe a minute here. So grab some Bridge, Bridgeford beef jerky, some really tender, awesome beef jerky. I always have it while I'm graphing around the lake. So uh, we're just gonna make sure everything is rolling here. Looks good. Let me just check everything again. Um, let's see here. Looking good. Awesome. Okay. Well, got some Bridgeford beef jerky. Let's roll. Oh, let me take my spot lock trolling motor up. One second. Okay. Now we're going. Man, kind of clustered to get started, but that's okay. We're rolling. Okay, so right here on Beaver. Beaver Lake is a highland reservoir. It's the end of May. The fish should be moving offshore, getting post spawn. So we're going to try to find some offshore fish. That's kind of the goal. Now you can see my screen here, driving up over a kind of just a random rounded point. I'll show you on the graph here in a second for the mapping what it looks like. But basically, the fish are still here. You can see there is a pile of fish showing up, both on 2D and on down imaging. They're just schooling up on the end of this point. I left them biting here last week. And as you can see, there's several dots. They're not very big fish. I would say, based on the size of the arches on the 2D sonar and the size of the dots there. These are probably just, you know, pound, pound and a half fish. Nothing that's that exciting, but I do want to stop and try to see if I can catch a couple fish. I did actually have some success last week where I would fish for these schools and throw a hair jig and a bigger bait underneath these smaller groups of fish. And I sometimes catch like one or two decent fish. And to kind of give you an idea of what we're actually fishing here when I'm gonna pull up and fish, it's basically just a rounded point off of an island here. Nothing super fancy. These fish are just sitting on the edge of it. There are a lot of places like this. We're gonna be bumping a bunch of different places hopefully today and trying to find some fish. There's a brush pile I marked over here last week that looked maybe okay, we might try that too. But right now we're gonna to try to catch some of these schoolers. And then if they're all small, then we're going to make an adjustment and try to just 
really four hours getting one quality fish, which again for beaver is like a three for beaver is like a three pounder. So we're gonna try to get one three pounder in the boat. What I'm gonna do first is I'm actually going to zoom in here on my mapping. I'm gonna make sure with my range ring on my mapping that I'm staying at least 100 feet to 200 feet away from the spot. That ring around my boat right now is 100 feet. So I'm a good 200 feet away. It'll give me a little bit of an opportunity to kind of sneak up on these fish, though I did just graph right over them. And we should be able to go up there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll switch over to my live scope on this. Now I'm gonna switch over here. We're gonna try this out. We're gonna go scene two. Let's see if this works. We're gonna see if we actually have this. Uh, let's see here. There we go. Oh. Okay, we're back. Uh, hopefully everything's going. The internet's kind of choppy out here. We're on the lake, so we're gonna try our best, but we're gonna switch it up over here. Let's see if the, uh, the live scope's showing up. Let's see here. Turn our live scope. What's going on? One second here, guys. I don't know what's happening with my live scope. Normally, pops up here. Okay, this is weird. One second. Let me switch over here. Sorry guys, we're having technical difficulties. Literally, I've had no, no problem with this for a bit. We've had my live scope showing up on the screen and now it's not showing up. What in the world? It's showing up up there. Of course, right when we go live, having issues. Let's see here. Just bear with me a second, guys. I don't know what's going on. Um, okay, maybe this is working. Maybe I just have to change, that's very weird. Okay, I think now it should be showing up. Let me just scan over here. We should be good. Trying to work through the kinks, guys. This is my first time literally doing one of these live streams on the lake with this whole setup, so appreciate the patience on all of this. I uh, don't wanna get, spend too much time screwing around, but this is an experiment. I might cut this down when we make the YouTube video, I'm not really sure, but we're giving it a shot. I'm making my way up here, guys, over to this area that I saw these fish on, and we're basically just uh, trolling over there. There was a bunch of fish. You can actually see them up there now, all on the live scope. Make sure this is showing up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we're good. Now, are we still streaming? Well, maybe. We're going to try it. Okay, let's roll up here. I'm going to throw a swim bait over the top here really fast uh, just to see if I can get one to bite. Uh, we're on the right screen. We're good to go. Okay, so you can see those fish are all up there right now going crazy on the live scope about 80 feet in front of the boat. There's one. First cast, not a big one, but first cast of the day. I don't know if that's good luck or bad luck. I really don't know, but let me get this guy in the boat. Not a big one, just a little guy. There we go. On the little prototype swim bait hook from Core Tackle. Nice little fish. Can you guys see that okay? I think you guys probably can. Nice little swim bait fish. Nothing crazy, just a little guy, but it's a size, it's like an average beaver bass, very tiny. Uh, but first fish, first cast, not a bad way to do it. Let's uh, fire back out there and see if there's a better one. I'm gonna throw the swim bait through there a few times. And then honestly, I'm gonna probably put the swim bait down because it does have a tendency to get a lot of these smaller fish. And I'm gonna see if I can catch a better one with, here we go. Another one, next cast. See if I can catch a better one, throwing something a little bit different, like a hover rig down there, or a, uh, a hair jig or something like that. Oh, here's a white bass for you, a little striper. They're mixed in with those other fish. Don't fin me fish. Don't y'all hate these little white bass? Get back out there. 
a pile of them. Those, those fish that were following that fish back to the boat, there's actually now underneath the boat, you can see them, but there's a handful that followed it, but there's still a bunch of them up there. And this one feels slightly better. It may just be in our white bass though. It's not coming up. Oh, no, it's a bass. Okay. So another little guy, nothing big. So actually you can see guys, I'm catching these little guys cast after cast, not a big deal, but uh, I'm actually gonna switch it up and go to a different bait just cause whenever you keep catching fish this size, which are non keepers here on Beaver, you don't wanna keep throwing that same bait. Cause basically what's happening is that they're, those small ones are able to get that little 2.8 swim bait. There's a big bite baits pro swimmer it can get it in their mouth. So I'm gonna throw a bait that maybe is a little bit bigger profile that they can't get in their mouth, the, the small ones. And I can maybe, get, oh gosh, there was one. Ah, there, see, now I'm throwing the hover rig and those fish are all over it, but they can't get it in their mouth because they're too small, which is actually a good thing. We want the better quality fish to eat, not these little guys. So we're gonna throw a little bit bigger profile bait See if that works on them. Those better quality fish a lot of times will chase this bigger bait. Go back up there. They went crazy on that thing. I'm actually gonna cut the weed guard off. I don't really need the weed guard for this on this hover rig. It's just a core tackle, eighth ounce hover rig with a four inch striking caffeine shad. Chop off that, that weed guard just to improve hookup ratio just a tiny bit. Fire that thing out there. Let's see if that gets one. Oh, he hit it again. They're going crazy. Huh? Got him. Doesn't feel like a good one either though. It's in there, little guy. So maybe this is not the bait either. <laughs> Another little fish, little spotted bass on the hover rig. They are eating that thing though. Beautiful little hover rig fish. So I'm gonna throw out there one more time with the hover, see if I can get through those small ones. And if not, I'm gonna to go to an even bigger bait and just kind of keep upsizing my bait until these little ones stop eating it. Get the hook out of this little guy's mouth. What the heck? He really got that thing in there. There we go. So actually I'm gonna put that guy back. I'm gonna put the hover rig down and I'm gonna to go to a bigger swim bait. I'm gonna to go to a six or a 5.8 Kitek on a bigger size of that prototype swim bait hook I'm talking about. Before I cast in there, let me make sure the stream and everything is working. I think so. Um, okay, fish are still up there. I'm not really live scoping them specifically. I have the live scope on to show you what's going on, but I'm actually just kind of like chilling. Uh, I could pan around and stuff. I don't really actually like trying to follow these fish with my swim bait and stuff like that on the live scope. I find it's better just to do a nice solid steady retrieve through these fish and usually I can get more bites that way not really worrying about the live scope that much. Now I might have to change that up here to target better individual fish. You can see them look at that they're all following that thing on the live scope. There's a bunch of them that are following this big swim bait but they can't eat it because they're too small and a lot of these areas these brush pile areas we're going to be fishing today and this stuff I'm going to be throwing baits like this big swim bait because if one of one just hit it if one of them can eat this big 5.8 swim bait it's probably going to be the size fish we want and I'm giving up bites because of this I'm not going to be getting nearly as many bites because I'm going to this bigger bait I could just sit here and just wear out the 12 inches all day but that's not really the goal today we want to be catching some better ones I'm reeling up to some fish right now you can see them they're all over it. They swim by it. They want to eat it, but they're not big enough to eat it. I'll fire over here, see if there's some fish chilling over here. And I'm just kind of fan casting this area. There's a straight up pile of them. I put the hair jig on, which is a good in-between size between this big, big swim bait that these fish are struggling to eat. And then the little tiny swim bait that I can catch them on. But I'm, I'm not really that worried about sitting here and catching a bunch of eight inches all day. That's not, ooh, one just hit it right there. They're hitting this big swim bait. It's pretty funny. These little fish are, eat, are trying to hit the swim bait, but their mouths are too small. Uh, you know, got a little 
on this little prototype swim bait hook on a 5.8 Kitek. And these fish are too small to actually hit this thing. So we're gonna go back down to a hair jig, just a half ounce hair jig, and see if maybe an in between, the, something in between that small swim bait and that bigger swim bait will actually produce a fish that maybe can eat this thing. Honestly, if it's a three pounder, it should be able to eat that big swim bait. And I, I throw that big swim bait a lot because it allows me to actually catch some of those better quality fish when you have these massive schools of just dinks that you're dealing with. Cause there's a lot of little ones up there. I'm also getting probably a little bit close. Back us up a tiny bit. Nothing on the hair jig. Last time I was out here last week, the hair jig was kind of the deal for me to get a few better quality bites. I got a couple like two pounders to bite this hair jig compared to the 12 inchers. But from what I saw on the graph with the 2D, when I graphed this spot, it didn't look like there were that many better quality fish here. It looked like there were a lot of the fish I was just catching at the beginning and I'm getting hit on this hair jig. They're bumping it. They're up, there's a lot of them up there. It's all real small. So we're probably gonna leave this spot here in just a second, maybe graph around the corner of this to see if there's more fish around the side of this and then move on. One of the worst things you can do is just stay and fish a spot where you're not catching quality fish. I'm gonna throw in that swim bait back up there just to show you guys that you can just catch them literally almost every cast if you throw that small bait. I was, again, throwing that 5.8 Kitek or out there and now this is the 2.8 big bite baits pro swimmer and that small swim bait they'll choke it the big swim bait not so much now i might not catch one on this cast because i'm trying to call my shot but we'll see if it works or these fish may have just stopped firing for a second too i might need to come back and fish them again let's see here cast over here. Let's see if one actually comes up and eats it. They may have calmed down after I caught four or five of them. I need to come back to the spot. I also might need to drag around a little bit deeper too with like a football jig or something. I think I saw a little bit of brush over here. I might actually try to go fish just off the side of this. When we graphed this earlier, I just Notice a little bit of brush and maybe if I drag a football jig or something through some brush, I might be able to get a better bite. I don't wanna to spend too much time on these spots, each spot, but with this many fish here, there is a chance that there's a better quality fish around somewhere, just given how many there are. Uh, so I'm gonna live scope up here. I'm gonna see if I can see a a better brush pile or something out here that these fish might be holding on. Not seeing anything super exciting right now. That looks decent right there. I'm just gonna fire my football jig up there. You can see those fish actually chasing those shad. That's crazy. Okay, you can't do this in a tournament, but I'm about to go fire on these fish because I mean, shoot, why not? I'm not in a tournament, I'm about to catch one right here. They're pushing those bait fish to the surface. That's crazy. If I can get my bait through those fish. Eat my bait fish, come on. What are you doing? How did you not eat that thing? I missed the cast maybe? They came up out of deep water and were chasing. They're swimming away. I don't like chasing fish with live scope all that much this time of year because I do it enough in the winter. I don't really like messing with it too much. So I don't try to chase them too much. I prefer to pick up a bait like a jig and fish around just because it's a little bit more, it's a good change of pace. Probably the best way to go, if you wanted to go out in here and catch the best bag possible, maybe the best way to do it would be to just like live scope around and just pitch a Demiki rig or something at all of these fish that are just swimming. You look for the better quality ones on the live scope. I just really don't want to do that today because that's, I did that all winter. And that's a lot of, uh, it's a long time to do the same thing. And 
I like to just mix it up, change it up. I'm probably a little bit too close on the spot. Normally I'd like to be a little bit further back, like 50 feet away. Usually I like to stay out, especially if I'm fishing like a jig on a, on a spot like this. Usually I'll pull up more than 100 feet away from it and then throw the jig down there because I get getting a little bit too close. And even I might be a little bit too close given the fact that when I first pulled up here, I stayed really far out and bombed my swim bait up there and got those bites. And then the boat, just from the wind and the waves, I drifted closer. And as soon as I got within like 50, 60 feet of those fish, I haven't gotten a bite. So I, from that, I've learned I need to stay further away from these spots to get bit most likely. Though I just don't think there's that many good quality fish down here. There's a lot of little ones. So we're gonna drag this jig just for a second longer and then we're gonna roll. We're gonna try to graph with the 2D because we got some fish on the board. But we're gonna graph with the 2D and just try to find a brush pile or something with some better quality fish in it. It's kind of the goal. And we'll go out a little bit more towards the main lake too, maybe. Might help our cause slightly. Okay. Yeah, let's go do that. But at least we're on the board. We got started. We got through some of the technical difficulties. Hopefully we're still streaming. I haven't gotten a call yet, so maybe that means that we're still good. Uh, <laughs> let's hope. Throw this up and put these rods strapped up. And we're gonna just keep idling around this corner real quick. Let me switch um, over on my side to this. There we go. Okay, so basically on this first spot, there was a lot of little fish. I see some comments on here on the stream of try this bait or that bait. I could probably catch more of these fish if I really wanted to, but that's not the goal today. The goal is not to fish for these small fish. And on the sonar, I can tell they're pretty small fish. So that's not really my objective today. My objective is to find those better quality fish. So I'm gonna not, if I'm catching those little ones right off the bat, not a great sign. I might come back to the spot and check it out here in a little bit, just see if maybe some bigger fish pull in. But for right now, I'm not gonna mess with it too much. And I'm gonna focus on trying to look for a spot that I can see multiple quality fish on. If I see bigger arches, bigger dots here on 2D or down imaging, it'll give me confidence to actually start thoroughly fishing these areas and like, you know, Demiki rigging some fish or like I have a Neko rig I might throw around, things like that. But for now it's, you know, all smaller fish. So we're gonna keep graphing here. Eating some Bridgeford beef jerky while we're graphing. Sponsor of the Fish the Moment live stream and podcast. Shout out to Bridgeford. We got something on the side imaging over here. It looks like just some rocks and stuff, nothing crazy. We're gonna spin around and just kind of graph that little bit deeper edge that we saw on the lives or on the side imaging. Might be a little bit too deep. A lot of these fish are up in like 15 feet of water, it seems like right now, just based on what we saw on the first spot and what I've been seeing the last couple weeks. They're not really sitting out here in like that 25 to 30 foot yet. They will get there eventually, but they're not there quite yet. Let me run up, I'm gonna run up to one of these points up here where I had some fish mark the other day. We're gonna make a quick run just up to this channel swing point and then there's a bunch of brush and stuff on these main lake points that have been holding fish so we'll go check that out. We're at this next point. Just got a channel swing point right here on the main lake at the mouth of this major creek. Uh, you can see here we're on this part of the lake. There's a big major creek that runs in here. I got a bunch of stuff marked back in there for more spring stuff. But 
back up here, we have this nice channel swing point. It's like five foot up on top, drops off into like 70 feet. Great summer spot, great kind of later in the year, kind of like May, June spot. I've caught some big fish here even like in July and different times of the year. So fish will use this. There've been a few fish that have been kind of up and around on this point, but they've been small on these few brush piles I have marked. Got a couple fish on the graph right there on the down imaging, as you can see. About to graph a pile right here. Um, couple fish. There's some bait on the side imaging, and then there's some fish right there, just scattered on that drop. There's a few fish. Let me switch over to this few. So as you can see on, it's actually interesting. If you look at my 2D sonar inside, uh, 2D sonar down imaging, you can see that there's some fish right in the center of the screen there on down imaging, but there's nothing on 2D sonar. That tells me those are very small fish. Those are fish that I'm not really worried about catching just because I'm not seeing the arches on 2D. I am seeing them on down imaging. I made a video about this literally last week. If you guys want to check it out, it's my last video I made. Uh, last Friday, and I talked about how to set up your graph so that you can filter out smaller fish with 2D sonar and with your down imaging, and it's pretty cool. Basically, it allows me to avoid wasting time on smaller fish, and there's a lot of, you know, times you can pull up on a spot like this and catch a random good one, but I'm really looking for a group of better ones, so I'm not even going to fish there. There's probably some smaller spotted bass like the ones I saw earlier on that uh, point, but not worth fishing, didn't see anything of quality. Now I got another mark up here, I have no idea what this is because it's multiple things together. What is in this? Oh, it's a brush pile, okay. Got a little brush pile here, can you keep graphing? Spend a lot of time graphing, guys, when I'm on the lake. Honestly, I spend more time graphing than anything else. I started on that first spot fishing just to kind of keep the live stream some semi-interesting. I'm also going to keep graphing. I know there's no waypoints or anything on this spot or these, this area, but I'm not going to worry about like just running waypoints all the time. I like to re-graph areas because two things can happen. One, guys can plant new brush piles out here. Two, you can find a random grouping of fish that wasn't here before on like an isolated stick or a rock that I didn't think was that great looking when I graphed it the first time or a couple years ago or whenever I graphed this last. And as you can see, there's some isolated fish here on down imaging but I'm not gonna even bother fishing for those because there's no cover around. There's no brush piles, rock piles, anything in this area. You can see there's a couple more just random fish if we switch over to uh, my split view, but they're just not big. You can see they're not, there's nothing showing up on my 2D sonar, so small fish. We got a few more brush piles coming up here, so we're gonna graph these. And basically, I just spend a lot of time graphing and I'm using my electronics to eliminate areas. I want to eliminate as much water as possible with my graphs before I start fishing. And I also want to make sure that there are quality fish in those areas. I don't want to have an area that's full of small fish because otherwise, I'm, again, I'm just wasting time. Wasting time fishing stuff that's not good. So there's a pile right there. It went right over top of it, which is good. Got a couple fish around it on 2D or sorry, on down imaging. Uh, some of those fish look okay. Maybe pound and a half fish, maybe two pounders. Might be worth making a cast on. Let me switch back over here real quick. I'm actually pull up and cast on that brush pile real quick. There's a bunch more brush coming up, so I don't wanna miss anything good by staring at the screen, but I think that brush pile back there looked like it had a couple fish suspended over the top of it, and they had decent size to them. There might be like a pound and a half, two pounder in there. So we might fish that. Uh, sometimes when you see those arches like that, on this new unit I'm working on, I mistake, I'm, I sometimes underestimate the size of the fish because I'm still getting these units dialed in. I was out the other day on the lake and I think I fixed it, but I was thinking that the fish were only like a pound and a half to two pounds and I caught like a four pounder out of a brush pile and I had to like recalibrate all my settings. So uh, when you're working with a new unit like this one, I got it for this streaming setup. Sometimes you have to uh, change your mind mindset of 
fishing a couple more spots than you would normally fish just because it's hard to know exactly what you're looking at on the screen when you're new to a unit. So I'm going to pull away here. I'm on my mapping here. I'm going to pull up on this brush pile that we marked. Now I'm going to try to stay, again, like 150, 200 feet away from it. And I'm just going to kind of pull up over here. So now I'm about 100 plus feet away from this brush pile. I'm going to stop. I'm not going to fish this very long because I didn't see a lot of fish. And I'll show, I'll leave this up on the screen, what I'm showing here as I approach this spot, just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. Um, and you'll see what's going on. So we'll start there. Let me switch to this view. There we go. Okay. So and there was a question, there's someone mentioning that they feel like my sonar settings look blank. And the reason that my settings look blank, guys, on 2D sonar is because I purposely do that. Check out my last video I talked about doing this. What am I gonna throw? Probably throw a swim bait and then I'll probably throw a jig in there. Let's see, get this little guy out. Okay, so what I'm basically doing, guys, is I'm lining up on this pile and I'm going to use these range rings I have set up to basically point my boat in that direction, get about 100 plus feet away from these, these piles. Now I'm not going to actually see the brush pile first, so I'm actually gonna spot lock right here, if it lets me. I'm gonna spot lock right here, and as you can see on the graph, I'm basically like right at 100 feet, and I wanna make a really long cast out to these spots. So I have that pile, I'll show live scope so you guys can see what I'm looking at. Basically, there's my live scope, and I'll point it out in front of the boat. and if I show you, you don't really see the pile. There's not much out there. You can see actually a fish. And I'm trying to stay as far away from that pile as possible, bomb a cast out there, and try to work a bait over the top of that pile before I get too close. The biggest mistake I see a lot of anglers make when they start fishing offshore is they get too close to these spots trying to see everything on live scope. You just don't need to do that. You can get on these spots with your traditional waypoint method, get lined up on these spots, get close enough with your first few casts, especially with like a swim bait, stuff like this, working it over the top, and you're not spooking those fish. Then I can move up more. I'm gonna switch over here, make sure I'm, I'm actually kind of drifting slightly. I have my mapping up here, it doesn't always show. I, I have to record the back graph uh, to get this recording set up to work, so you're not actually seeing, I'm lining up, I'm relining up on these waypoints up here uh, with my I need to kind of pull it from a different angle because of the wind. I'm relining up on this. There we go. So I'm firing out there. That brush pile is not visible yet on purpose because I'm trying to make a cast that's more than 100 feet out there. And I'm trying to bring this bait over because these fish can get real spooky to the live scope. And I just don't want to mess with them too much right off the bat by getting too close. Now, I will get up there closer to kind of see what's going on in a second, but I want to make at least a couple casts where they're not feeling my boat that much. I'm trying also not to spot lock as much as possible, trying to reduce my noise, reduce the noise of the trolling motor, reduce the noise of my sonar pinging down on them, all that stuff. Switching this up. I'm kind of I'm angled right, which is good. So we're gonna make one more cast up there. I'm just kind of fan casting around the pile just to, oh, oh, golly, he just crushed that thing. Urgh. Oh, one just hit it again. Get it, get it, come on. Can't see what's going on because they're so far out there. But I can, you can kind of see them now just getting onto the live scope. They're all following it. They must not be very big. No, they're all, that, I pulled all those fish from that brush pile. You can see them now about 70 feet out. Let me get back over there. I pulled those off that brush pile they were all over there. I got hit three times on that cast. Those weren't big ones, I don't think. Let's see if one of them actually eats the dang thing. I'm trying to make really long casts, just get away from the boat. Oh wow, there's a bunch of fish right in front of me too. What the heck, I need to, I need a Demiki rig is what I need. I'm gonna pitch that swim bait over to him. There's a bunch of fish. I don't even have a Demiki rig tied on. I probably should. I can 
probably Demiki rig them with this Demiki rig basic version with just a swim bait. Working bait though. A lot of times on these fish though, oh man, there's a pile of them right there. These are these, that's, I think I'm getting closer to that brush pile. I'm, yeah, I'm getting, I, I've pulled up closer to it. Now with the wind, the wind's kind of drifted me up here a little bit. I got bit off that. There's two piles kind of out here. I got bit on the first one over there, staying far off. Let's see if these fish actually eat my swim bait. Come on, fish. There's enough of you over there. Not every spot's just going to be a hammer hole where you're going to catch them first cast every time. So you kind of have to play it by ear. I'm going to throw a different bait down there too, like a football jig or something in that brush, try to actually hit that brush with a jig. Because it looks like there may have been some better fish that were just kind of down in there. And they're not coming up to chase the swim bait, which is interesting. Drifting off, good now. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that football jig down in there. Football jig is a great bait this time of year, guys, when there's a bunch of fish just chasing around, schooled up, because you can get that jig down past all those smaller fish. Brush piles right there. Get that jig down past all those smaller fish into that pile, and those small little tiny Kentuckys and little fish that just keep bumping my bait, they're not very big. They can't eat that jig. It won't fit in their mouth, and you can throw the uh, throw that football jig through there and those better quality fish, those two to three pounders will actually eat that jig. And even though every, all these fish are schooling and swimming around and chasing, I, I don't like to mess with those as much and just focus on dragging that jig whenever possible because I just get a better quality of fish on average. Or if I'm going to chase after those schoolers, I'll throw a hair jig on them. There's that brush right there. Let's see if there's any better ones home. Usually they're gonna bite too. If you if there's a good one down there, it's gonna bite on your first cast into that pile. Dang, there's a lot of little ones down there though. Might have to chunk a hair jig or something. A lot of little ones. Surprised they're not even touching my swim bait. To be honest. Bunch of fish. Well, nobody home for the football jig. I get bit on football jigs usually first, second cast, so I'm not going to screw around too much. I'm going to throw that swim bait through there one more time just to see if any of them will actually eat it. Not interested. All right then. Maybe you want the hair jig? You can see I rotate a lot of baits when I'm out here, guys, because you just don't know exactly what these fish want, how to get them to bite, so I'm always constantly rotating and changing baits. These just look real small. It's probably the problem, or they could even be, no, these probably aren't crappie given the size of the fish I graft on it. That's the really big crappie. These should be bass. It might be just bigger crappie though. I don't know though. This new unit's got me all confused because I'm not quite used to it yet <laughs> on exactly what I'm looking at on the screen. Popping that hair jig up off the bottom. What I'm actually gonna do guys, just to kind of keep it interesting, is I'm gonna, I know there's some fish around this point up here, and I'm just gonna work my way around this point, because I actually caught him here this last week, uh, and I have images from my last video that of this spot 
Um, and if I catch some fish here, I'll, I'll re-graph it too. But I, I know there's some better quality fish here setting up on this point, and instead of graphing it and messing up the school, I'm just going to actually just fish it and see if I can catch some of these fish by just bombing casts up there, getting it further away from the boat. I don't want to get too, f I'm trying to stay away from these fish with electronics in my boat as much as possible because these fish just get so much pressure from other guys and I find that it's really hurting the bite on a lot of these offshore spots because everyone's just kind of doing the offshore deal now. So you have to be a little bit sneakier than everyone else. Throwing different baits, staying further away from the fish, things like that. Just random fish cruising. But I need to find us some bait. There's usually going to be a little stretch around these points where there's some bait balls. And I'm just gonna kind of work my way, cruise my way across this point. I can bomb that hair jig a mile. So I can kind of keep that in front of the boat. And I can't even see that far with my live scope. And I'm not worried about that. This is how I grew up fishing all these points is you just get on them, you start seeing scattered fish and bait, bomb a hair jig out there, let it hit the bottom and if they're there, there's a good one there, he'll eat it. And you can get those fish a lot better than if you're getting right up on them with a live scope. Full of fish just randomly swimming out here. I like fish are high up in the water column. I think it might be because of the uh, clouds today. They're like roaming higher. Normally the cloud cover pushes them further down to the bottom, but a lot of these fish just seem to be cruising. I'm gonna pick up that swim bait again. Keep that hair jig handy. I'm just gonna fire that swim bait around uh, here. If it was sunnier, I'd be a lot more inclined to go drag around the football jig. I still might do that here. I'm not fishing for a lot of fish today, guys. Beaver is a stingy lake. So if I can get a couple good bites an hour, or every, if I can get one good bite an hour, one two and a half pounder every hour, two pounder every hour, mix in like a three or a four, doing pretty well. And usually it comes in spurts out here. And right now I'm just running these points and these points just might not be good anymore. I caught them here last week, so we're, I'm not gonna waste too much time on them, but I do wanna give them a decent shot. There's some fish right there. See them all over that deal right in front of the boat at 90 feet. There's a brush pile out here and they are just going all over it. Probably gonna catch one on this cast most likely. Let's see if they actually come eat it. Now I'll throw the football jig down there. Oh, one just hit it. following it. Wow, those might be crappie. That's the problem with, with not graphing these spots before you fish them, guys, is that <clears throat> it's hard to tell if you're looking at bass or crappie sometimes on the live scope, where on my 2D sonar, I can really tell, and on the, the down imaging, I can tell a lot easier what species these fish are. Maybe it's just because I'm not as good with the live scope identifying fish as I am with the other sonars, but usually I can identify the fish a lot better on, there's a couple good ones right there. I can identify them better on my down imaging in 2D. So I like to graph these spots first, if possible, with down imaging, because you just don't want to waste time fishing spots that just don't have any bass on them. They're just crappie. And I'm not, right now I'm not even going to bother casting, if they didn't come up and eat the swim bait with all those fish there, pretty sure we're not dealing with bass or, or something I want to mess with. They look really stacked up too. Those look like kind of like crappie, but maybe they're bass, but they look real small too. So I'm not going to mess with them too much. I'm just going to leave it be. <laughs> Even though it looks really, really good, I have known from experience, if you don't get bit on a school that big within your first or second cast, something's not quite right with that.
don't know what those are. Now those are more spread apart. Those could be bass. Usually when, these, when you see these dots on down imaging, and also sometimes on the live scope, when the dots are more spread apart and they're not like stacked on top of each other, it's more likely that you're dealing with bass than crappie. So these right here might be bass. It's on the screen right there. I'm getting a little bit close. I might need to stop just randomly scoping around. Also gonna have to change up baits here in a minute because these fish are not reacting to the swim bait like they should be. And that might be there's a bait selection thing. Keep firing it because I have a lot of confidence in the swim bait that I can pull those fish from deeper water and get them to come eat. Oh, he just bumped it. Come on, fish. There, he hit it again. You can watch him. They're freaking trying to eat it. I'm going to pitch my hover rig down there. These are not big fish. I can just tell by the way they're reacting to that swim bait, but I'll see if I can get one to eat the hover. Probably too small for the hover. You can just see though, if you guys were watching the beginning of the stream, on my first spot, I literally pulled up and started catching them first cast. What in the world? How did this happen? I was catching them first cast on that spot. I got my line all screwed up here. One second, guys. This is, this is the stuff you don't see in YouTube videos. This stuff gets cut out when you have your line getting screwed up, you're not catching fish. All this stuff gets cut out. But that's why I want to do these live streams, honestly, because I just want to show you what a real day is like. Because like right now, I've got that out and I've messed up this now. Now this is all screwed up. And I'll probably have, probably missed a fish. He probably had it in his mouth and was swimming with it for 30 seconds. Okay, but you can see on that first school of fish, guys, when I pulled up there and just, it was happening. I mean, it was going down. And I caught four on my first four casts. And that's how it happens most of the time when I get on these offshore deals, guys, is that you catch them pretty fast. So you don't have to sit there and milk them and milk them and milk them. And if they're not eating, usually I'm not gonna mess with them too much. I might come back and fish them later. Maybe they're in a bit different mood or the fish are biting better or something but I'm not gonna screw around with them too much if like they're slapping at my bait, if they're not acting right, because there's a lot of good spots out here on the lake. You're not, you don't need to get stuck and fish one spot for like five hours. You're just wasting your day away if you're sitting there. And I know some guys are probably like, well, I'll just slow down, throw a worm or do whatever. And if that's, you know, what you guys want to do, go for it. That's just not really my fishing style. It's never been my fishing style. And so I just, I'm gonna go show you how I like to fish how I do it, and I know people might be doing it differently than what I do, but this works for me, and usually I catch them pretty good, so I'm just gonna keep doing my deal. Oh, freaking chasing Chad up here, what the heck? Come on, fish, is he up there? Is that shallow? No. Oh, what's going on? Okay, we're gonna graph the next spot. I should have just, I shouldn't have just randomly started fishing this. I thought I might be able to sneak up on some, but they uh, they did not react, and I feel a lot better when I can actually see them on my down imaging. So we're gonna reorganize all this stuff, and we're gonna go graph this next point and see if those fish are still there. And if not, we're gonna call an audible. And we're gonna go run somewhere where we can maybe find some bigger fish, maybe stop chasing these schoolers around and try to throw a football jig or something in some brush. So. Uh, let's see here. Let's switch this. Okay. Here we go. Pull this back up over here. 
another point. You can see all these fish down here. They're freaking all over the place on my graph. I want to show you this though, because I, I have a hunch of what's happening. So, we come out here. They look okay there because I was stopped. But as you can see, because I was stopped, that transducer was hitting the same spot over and over again. But these are all these fish now on the 2D sonar. See how they're non-existent once I actually started moving at speed? Where these are those dots, they're all tiny fish. They're not showing up here, right? They should be showing up right there on 2D sonar because there's dots right there on down imaging. So that dot should be showing up over on 2D if it was a quality fish. But again, with my settings, I made a video about it last week. With my settings, I filter out those really small fish. And so that's why those fish just weren't eating the swim bait. And it looks great on live scope. And a lot of times the fish do look great on live scope because just with the settings and everything. And if you, you want to be able to see everything that's happening down there, especially to see the bait, I don't like filtering out fish size on live scope like I do on 2D because you'll miss a lot of the smaller bait fish and things like that. So you kind of have to put up with those screens to get cluttered with those smaller fish. But we definitely, don't want to waste time fishing for those small fish. And that's why usually I graph over spots before I just fish them. Also eating some Bridgeford beef jerky. Shout out to Bridgeford, sponsor of the live stream. Good snack. Okay. Got a brush pile here. I caught a good one here last week, like a three pounder. We'll see if there's actually any good fish here right now. They may have moved. I don't know why they would move, but Okay, so we got one decent fish. Hmm. Okay, not great to be honest. I'm gonna regraph that one more time because there's a bunch of stuff. So if we look at side imaging here, the uh, so shoot side view, side view. Come on, here we go. You can see that there's some fish that are suspended in the shadows of this drop. There's one right there. If I move the cursor, you can see there's a dot right there where the cursor is now. There's a dot in the shadow of this drop. So there's a couple fish. There was a fish or two on the traditional sonar over here that looked better than average. Like that fish looks probably like a two pounder. That might be a pound and a half fish. That's probably a two pounder. So there's a couple fish around, but there's not a lot of fish that look very big. Um, there's just a couple. I'm gonna see if I re-graph this and hit it from a different angle and I see more of those better quality fish. I really wanna be seeing, like we see a couple dots there. There are a couple fish here. That's actually a better one right there. You can see on 2D, one just popped right there. So I've seen like three decent fish so far. Now there's a bunch of fish right there. They're not showing up on the 2D. So those are smaller fish. So there's a couple decent ones around here. What I probably need to do, is I probably need to drag a jig, because all those better quality fish I was seeing were pretty deep. So what I might do is get on this point, drag a jig to see if I can target like a fish like that one right there. You can't see because of the screen. Uh, there's a fish like right there that's right on the bottom. That's a better quality fish. That's probably a two pounder to three pounder right there. It's closer to the bottom, about 15 foot. That fish will probably bite a jig, so I'm gonna drag a jig on this. If I see some fish that pop up, I'm gonna try that. And then if this doesn't work, we've been out at it here for, I don't know how long we've been going. We've been going for about an hour. And we've really not had a ton of luck on this deal, even though that's what we caught them on last week. So hour fishing to kind of eliminate what's happening, not too bad. Fishing is not that easy on beaver, where I'm just gonna pull up here and just start catching 15 pounds in like five minutes. So. If you guys are like, why isn't he catching fish every cast? Well, welcome to bass fishing. I don't catch him every cast. Nobody catches him every cast. Um, when you watch guys on TV, they've had three or four days of practice to do all of what I'm doing right now. I am going out and just kind of figuring it out and trying my best. So uh, a lot of times I don't just pull up here and just start smashing them. Actually 90% of the time I don't pull up and just start smashing them in the first 10 minutes. Usually it takes quite a bit of time to kind of dial in what's happening on these lakes and that's okay that's normal that's like what everyone deals with it's not you're not doing it wrong if you're going out fishing offshore for five hours and 
you finally get bit five hours in the day. That's just literally the norm. So we're gonna, I'm gonna spot lock here into the wind. The wind is blowing into my face right now, so I'm spot locked. I positioned my boat. If the wind was blowing, um, if the wind was blowing from the air direction, if it was blowing from like behind the boat here, I would have positioned myself on the other side of the point so I could spot lock and be into the wind. And I would have actually come and graph these spots. I would have run all the way there, graph them so I could put my boat there. Basically, I'm just trying to put myself in a good position with the wind so I don't have to mess with getting blown around too bad. I got the live scope going up there. There's not really anything I'm looking for on the live scope. I have the live scope view up, but a lot of times I'm not really looking at it. Uh, like right now I'm just dragging the point. I know there's a couple of decent quality fish up there and I'm not going to like try to target an individual fish with the live scope. I lined up with my, oh, oh golly. That had to have been a little one, but he smoked it. Mm. He smoked that thing. How did he not eat that? Golly. I should have checked him. He hit it so hard, I was like, oh, he's ha it has to be the, uh, in the back of his throat. And he did not, uh, he did not have it. Probably a small one, because normally when they're better ones, they will just get that thing. The reason I like throwing a football jig again, I can bomb it far away from the boat. I am out of reach of that like 15 foot of water. If you look ahead, like the top of the live scope at the end of the screen, it's topping out in like 20. And I saw that very quality fish up in 15. So I'm bombing way past where I can even see with the live scope. And honestly, I'm doing the live scope for the show. If I pull up to a spot, a lot of times I'll actually turn the transducer off when I first pull up to a spot like this, I'll actually stop transmitting with the live scope and just use the waypoints to line up to keep myself from getting uh, the ping hitting the piles and stuff or these rocky areas. Then I'll turn the live scope transmitter on when I actually want to go live scope and like look at and see what's down there. But I know what's down there because I just graphed it with my electronics. Now I don't feel like Graphing with the electronics over these fish has a massive negative impact on them. I think a lot of people have thought that. I graph over every school of fish I ever fish and I catch plenty, so I don't see it as a big problem. But I think fish are more accustomed to live scope now almost than they are to the boats driving over. Because I mean, there's people driving in and out of this channel all the time and party boats and pleasure boats and all kinds of stuff. So, oh. Golly, he just smashed that again. I need to tie on a, uh, I need to throw like a Ned rig or something down there. Because maybe, I don't know, maybe I can get one of those fish. Do I have a Ned rig in the, tie it on? Okay, I'm just gonna do something a little bit different here. Um, I'm gonna cut off this hover rig. There's some fish that are down there. I've got bit two casts in a row, but they have not committed. I think I have a Ned rig, there I do. I have a Ned rig out. I'm gonna tie on Ned rig. Just try to drag that real slow down there because there's a lot smaller fish that are up and I want to see if I can catch some fish that are down, but that football jig, maybe it's just a day. Sometimes fish just bite football jigs weird. And this is all part of the experimentation. You've probably seen me already throw five different baits and we've only been fishing an hour and I'm rotating a bunch of baits on these spots. I'm trying different stuff. And if you don't get bit on something, I mean, I change up a lot when I'm on the lake. And we, I mean, we found that first spot and we were catching them there, but I'm not gonna get too caught up on that because it's all little fish. We're trying to find better quality fish. Finding, the thing about fishing out here like this, like I'm doing is I'm fishing right now for five bites this time of year in May offshore. I could be out for eight hours. I might catch three of those fish off one spot, two of those fish off another, and it's 20 minutes of my day. I spend catching fish and I get five bites. I cut my YouTube videos and show you those few minutes of success, but this is what most of the time I'm out here is like, where I am checking spots, I pull up on the spot, it doesn't fire, doesn't fire, doesn't fire. And I keep going, I keep going, and you just keep your confidence up because eventually it happens. Now it might not happen this live stream, I'll probably run on the camera battery or something's gonna happen. Maybe the stream stops working, who knows? And I might not catch them this time, and that's perfectly fine. I'm out here to show you guys what it's actually like. I'm not here to 
prove that I can catch fish. That's not, if I was gonna do that, I wouldn't make these videos because basically I'm gonna have people I know in the comments saying, oh, Johnny can't catch fish. Look, he went out there on Beaver and was live streaming and didn't catch any. I still think I'm gonna catch him. I feel pretty confident I'm gonna catch something. But that's just the name of the game on YouTube. But I don't really care anymore, to be honest. I'm just gonna do my thing. And uh, if you guys like the content, awesome. If you think I'm bad at fishing, that's fine. But for those of you who like the content, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna try to do these as much as I can. If the stream actually works and like the, the audio, if everything worked, the audio, if everything keeps going, I'm gonna try to stream as much as I can doing this. Uh, hopefully once a week if, if this actually works. Um, and I'm gonna go to lakes too that aren't beaver, which is like the toughest lake in my area. It's just beaver has the best cell signal. Uh, unfortunately, even though it has the fewest fish, uh, quality fish at least, but I'll go to some lakes that have some better quality fish so they're easier to catch fish on too. And beaver's gonna get better. I mean, right now I'm trying to fish offshore. For last week of May, this is not the easiest time to fish offshore on beaver. Uh, you can catch some decent ones, but it's not easy by any means. Okay, I'm gonna drag this Ned rig a little bit more and then I'm gonna fire a swim bait across this a couple times. Then we're rolling. I don't know where we're rolling to, but we're rolling somewhere. I'm gonna start graphing. I'm gonna try to find some like fish on a ledge or I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Oh, they're freaking schooling right there. Okay, I'm gonna do the, uh, the old don't do this in a tournament move, but they're literally schooling in front of me. So I am going to fire a swim bait at them. These fish do not count in tournaments. Do not do this boys and girls. If you are, uh, if you're in a tournament, you can't use two rods, but I'm out here for fun, so I can. We'll see if they even eat this thing. Didn't even eat it. That's fun. Let's see here. There's fish down there. You can see them now. I don't know how, they're just like kind of showed up. There's a lot of them down there. Those fish I just saw too were bass. Let me fire that swim bait down there and see if there's any that will actually come up and eat this thing. Count that swim bait down 15 seconds to get it down to the level of the fish. Just slowly reel it. We're still on spot lock. I'm not like following my swim bait or anything with the live scope. I'm just crawling that thing across. There's fish down there. They're just not. There's a couple of fish way up there. What the heck? Wow, there's fish right there. They're right in front of the boat. Just kind of get up here. We're gonna get up closer on this deal. I want to see what's going on a little bit on the live scope. See if there's any fish that are actually active or aggressive or where they might be or what they might be doing. There's a couple that are up here. Let's see here. There's some fish right there. I'm surprised I'm not getting these fish to actually. Oh, there's one. Eat it. Come on. Come on. They're all so small, dang. They won't even eat my swim bait, they're so small. They keep tapping it. Can't even get them hooked. That's the problem out here. On some lakes, literally those will be three and four pounders and you'll just be smashing them. Beaver, they're all 12 inches and they won't eat your swim bait because they're too small to eat a 2.8 swim bait. Pretty typical right there. It's like on that first spot I would have like six bump it. 
And then they all drop down to the bottom there. That's really weird. It also wouldn't eat a Ned rig, just dragging it by him. So I don't know what's going on with these fish today. If we fish this for a few more minutes, we're gonna make a run. I'm gonna try something different. I don't wanna live and die on this deal. And I think I know where I might be able to catch them, but we have to, may have to make like a little, oh gosh, the freaking schooling every time. Come on, fish. You gotta eat it. You literally are schooling right there. Come on. Dang, they're picky. They were not this picky last week. They would choke this little swim bait. I don't know if it's the day or the weather or what's going on. They're not having it though. Kind of have good weather for shallow bite to be honest, but don't lose my rod. But I'm not going shallow, it's not happening. Man, there's a bunch of fish up there. I know these are bass because I've caught bass here literally last weekend and you see there's a few decent ones. There's just a lot of small ones. Well, most of these fish were not even showing up on the 2D sonar, but there are a couple decent ones if you can get it right. I'm just going to fire up there and see if I can get this jig to do any work. Could be a timing deal too. These fish might be uh, in their kind of midday lull. Sometimes that's a deal. You pull up on spots like this. You can come back. Last time I caught him here, I caught him at like 2.30 in the afternoon. So a lot of times that timing can be a big deal on these fish where if you come here at 11 o'clock, you're not gonna catch much. And then you come back at two and it's just like gangbusters. They're, they're biting everything. So could be happening too. Let's roll. Don't like the look of this. We're gonna make a run. Let's see here. Don't know where we're gonna run to, but we're gonna make a run. We're gonna change something up. Let's see here. Switch to this deal. Okay, so basically we've been fishing for a bit, and uh, let me check my battery here real quick. Make sure, because sometimes when I have this battery on, it will uh, stop working. Oh, we're good, okay, we're good. That's what people are saying. Uh, people are saying fish the shoreline. Uh, there's a bunch of people suggestion stuff and I appreciate all the suggestions guys. I got to fish my style. The thing, one thing is it's very hard to fish other people's styles or trying different stuff. And if I don't have confidence in a bait or a technique, I'm just not going to have success with it. So I'm not going to get caught up in what, you know, I'm hearing from other people. I don't like to kind of get intel or anything from other, other people. I just do my own thing. Uh, Cause I like to fish my style and usually that's the best advice I can give an angler is figure out what you're good at and what you like and try to make that work for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, somewhere. We're going to make a little bit of a run and I'm going to run down the lake probably a little ways, not super far. Check a couple brush piles that I marked a little bit ago and then we're just going to make kind of a 
bigger run down the lake and see if I can find some fish that are sitting up on some ledges or some bars or something that's different. Because I just want to try something different. Um, these fish are not happening right now. And so I'm not going to waste time. I've only been streaming for an hour. I mean, an hour of fishing is like nothing for me, uh, honestly. So, I mean, we're barely getting started with our day. So we're going to go try a couple other spots here. We're going to run down the lake and see if we can find something. So, um, actually, let me switch to this view so you can kind of see where I'm running. This might be a cool view. I don't know. Maybe? Okay, we'll try that. And we'll see you guys when we get to the next spot. Okay, can you guys hear me in the stream? Uh, I, I don't know if this is working or not, but we're trying. We're trying our best over here uh, to make this happen. I went to an area, actually, I freaking found some in a brush pile, I feel like, and uh, we had no cell reception. And it was a spot that I feel like we could probably catch some fish, some better fish, but you guys couldn't see me or hear me or anything. So we are back where we started today. Uh, there are fish here. And more importantly, there's good cell signal. There's not big fish, but there is cell signal. So I'm just gonna stay here and catch these little fish and just try to maximize this area that we have. Maybe I'll catch a good one, who knows? Maybe I should have never left when I started catching them. Um, just moving up here with the live scope. Let me check this, I got my boat just rolling. Um, making sure everything maybe is working. Uh, let's see here. Let me know if you guys can actually hear me or see me or anything. I have no idea if you guys are even there anymore. Just doing my own thing apparently. Let me know in the comments though, or in the live chat. Try to get up here. And maybe I'm just talking to nobody, you know? Maybe I'm just out here on the lake, which is kind of the norm. Just talking to myself out here on the lake. Let me see, can anyone hear me? Oh, cool. Okay, we're back. Nice. Okay. Let's catch some of these little tiny dinks first. And uh, then we'll, there's some brush piles and stuff down this bank. For whatever reason, the uh, cell signal needs to be like really good for the live stream to work for my, my phone. I'm using a phone hotspot. If anyone has any ideas how to get better cell signal, let me know. Because I do not. But we're back where we started our day. They're still here, these fish. Staying kind of far out from them. You can see them all right there. There's a pile, a wad of them right there. They're acting funky today for whatever reason. So a lot of fish that are like down there off the edge, which is really weird. I might need to pick up a drop shot or something and drop shot these fish. I really don't like drop shotting, but we might have to do that. We have to resort to extreme measures. Oh, one just, oh, come on, fish. There, eat it. There we go. Finally. Decent one. I mean, there's a bunch of fish here. This is not a terrible, well, it's actually not big at all. I was going to say it's not a terrible beaver bass. That's really not saying much though, because beaver fish are very small. But finally got a largemouth here on a little prototype swim bait hook we're going to be launching from Core Tackle. That fish choked it. The problem is that he's the biggest one of the 15 that tried to eat it, and they're all small here. I need to figure out maybe there's a way to get a bigger bite. That can't be the, the only size fish here, but it kind of feels it like that way. There's a bunch of them here though. There's a couple of brush piles around. I'm going to fish the swim bait up here, see if because I mean, I can just catch him every cast out here if I want to. Maybe if I just catch enough of them, I'll weed through them and I'll catch like a two pounder. Let's tr we're gonna try that theory first. Then after that theory is 
potentially proven or disproven, then we can try something different. If you guys miss me graphing this spot, I graphed it at the beginning of the stream. It was the only spot that I found that really has like had them. The rest of the spots I've had graphed a lot. There's not that many spots out here right now where the fish are like getting it just because it's so early in the summer. A lot of these fish are not quite up yet or out here yet, but there are some and a lot of them are small right now, but there we go. I mean, I'm getting hit every cast on this point and they're all pretty dinky. Just thinking maybe if I weed through enough of them, there's a striper. If that was a large mouth, it wouldn't be that bad, honestly, but we're looking forward. The nice thing about the swim bait hook, guys, I can't really, I want to show it off too much because we're going to release it here later this, it'll probably middle of next month, but you can throw this thing and you're not going to go through a lot of swim baits, which is super nice because most swim bait hooks, you go through a ton of swim baits. This thing just, you don't go through a lot of swim baits, it has a really good hookup ratio when the fish are big enough to actually eat the thing. And uh, yeah, it works really, really well. Just a little 2.8 Kytec on this, this hook. I'm pulling a lot of these fish off this spot by catching them and then dragging them around. You can see them up there on the live scope a little bit. I'm not really using the live scope, I'm just fan casting this point because they're all kind of just up here. And uh, there's quite a few of them. Just don't know the trick to getting a bigger one. I'm gonna probably try dragging around the football jig a little bit off this point, just where I'm getting all these bites just underneath these fish. I'm also gonna try to throw, oh gosh, they're schooling way up there. Got them. They're schooling way up on that point. Like, at the end of my casting range, there's a bunch of little guys schooling up there. Got to be a better one or two. I'm going to fire a hair jig up there just to see. Small little largemouth. Maybe there's a good one up underneath them. Usually the hair jig will let you know that because these little guys won't be able to eat it. Gosh, they're busting them right here in front of me too. Golly. This spot's loaded with them. They're going crazy on them. Getting hammered with this hair jig too. They're not eating it. They're all too small to eat the hair jig. Golly, they're going crazy up here. You can see them over here. They're just, there's like a freaking pile of them. I'm gonna throw the hair jig. Keep throwing the hair jig. I could throw a swim bait and just catch them and catch them and catch them. They're all just tiny, uh, well, normal beaver lake fish from what I've found. Man. For fish quality. When there's this many fish around and they won't touch the hair jig, it just tells me that there's all little fish. And that's not the size fish that I want to be catching, but cell signal permitting, this is kind of the spot we got. It's the only good spot with good cell signal. So I'm gonna keep firing this hair jig around. If there are better fish here, they'll eat this because those better fish will sit underneath. You can see them all over the live scope, guys. It's, it's going crazy. I'm going to try to, I mean, I have my bait. They're hitting it. They really are. Like I'm getting bumped every single cast on the hair jig. And I can fire the swim bait, I'm sure, over in that direction. I can see them on the scope. They'll come up and eat it. And they'll, they'll choke the swim bait because it's a small profile and these fish are small. They just... Very stingy with a even slightly bigger bait. Man, there's a pile of them up there. 
way up on that point too. Got him. Yeah, I could catch these fish. Literally, I probably, if I, if I hadn't left, I probably could have just sat here and caught these fish all day. Literally. Is this a better one? I cannot tell. No. It's just striper. They're all tiny, so it's not like it's really helping the cause over here. Oh, he pooped all over me. Thank you, fish. I hate striper. Look at that. That is just, oh, that's wonderful. Don't you love that? Just striper poop all over the pants. Oh, man. Well, you know, happens. Happens to the best of us. Burning the swim bait over the top of these fish. I mean, honestly, this is not this is not rocket science, guys. I graphed this area at the beginning of the stream. There are fish literally everywhere. I'm just reeling the swim bait over this point, and they're biting at every cast. I mean, I've had four bite it as I'm talking to you right now. They're on it. He's bite, bite. There's one. And they're so small, it's hard to hook them. So we're gonna catch a couple more of these. That's the size fish that. Quick release size fish that's up here. There's a couple brush piles. There's a brush pile over here and here. I'm, I'm thinking about just going and dragging and jigging some brush, even though I didn't really see anything crazy in it. And I'm not gonna really pull up. Man. You really can't catch up every cast. Is that a better one? I actually couldn't even see. Oh, it's actually a keeper. What the heck? Okay. Maybe I can just weed through them. Is that actually a keeper? Uh, maybe? Let me get down there and get him. Yeah, that is a keeper. Well, no, maybe. Maybe a keeper largemouth out here, finally. Choking that prototype swim bait hook. They're all about it. This is now like, you see me catch a ton of fish on camera. This Big Bite Baits Pro Swimmer on that little prototype hook from Core Tackle. You can catch so many fish on it and that swim bait holds up really well. And that might be a 15 inch. Let me throw them on the board. I have a bump board around here somewhere. That'd be crazy if I have to just keep weeding through them. Maybe I am overthinking it. And I mean, no, it's a 14 incher. It's not a keeper, but maybe I just need to keep catching them. Maybe eventually I'll catch a, a three pounder off this spot. Who knows? Let's just keep catching them. Let's just see. This will be a good experiment. It's fun catching fish, you know, even when they're very small. And there's so many of them up there, it's crazy. I do want to try throwing a jig around the brush pile a little bit, because I think that's a better way to get quality. Man, they keep eating that thing. I, earlier I threw a really big swim bait on them to see if that would actually help, and it did not. Uh, fish couldn't get in their mouth a big, uh, I was throwing this 5.8 Kitek and fish just would not be able to get in their mouth. It was too big. Man, you can see all those fish down there. They're crushing my bait. Every single cast, I'm just getting hammered like six or seven times on each cast. Got him. Little guy again. You almost have to like, just reel him in as fast as you can just to get yourself a chance to get back out there on their striper. Are you gonna poop on me? Please don't, oh, broke, broke off. Don't lose that hook, we need those hooks. We don't have too many of those. There we go. I'm only throwing six pound test on this little swim bait. So I need uh, all the help I can get from or I need all these swim bait hooks I can get. So we don't have that many of them. Since they're kind of prototypes still, we're getting, we have them in production already, so that's good. Let me tie this on again. There we go. Yeah, I wish there was a more to say about what I'm doing other than just there's a pile of fish up on this point. If we were on like Gun Lake Gunnersville right now, these would be like four pounders and you guys would think I'm a genius, but because I'm on beaver, I'm catching one pounders. So you guys are like, why are you just keep catching dinks? But you know, that's just the nature of the fact that I live by beaver lake. 
Is that a better one, or is that just another striper? Feels like another striper. Yeah, another striper. Come on now. These stripers will fin you. These white bass will fin you, and I hate that. They get your they get you with their back dorsals. So you kind of have to watch out for that. It's crazy that there's all those largemouth mixed in with all of the, uh, or the stripers and the largemouth are mixed together up there. And they keep hitting it. Every single cast. I'm gonna go tie back on the, uh, the hover because the hover rig sometimes will get a better quality fish. Be with you, when you go to a four inch bait, this is a, I have one I was throwing earlier, just a, a four inch Strike King caffeine shad on this hover rig. See if that'll work. And then I'm gonna fish here just for like a few more minutes. I get bored of catching these little fish pretty fast. So uh, we're gonna catch a couple more, see if I can weed through any more and get like an actual good one. And maybe the trick today would be just to weed through them. But if it's not to weed through them, then we're going to go fish some brush piles that we have marked over here and just go fire on them and see if we can get a better bite. Just see if those largemouth, better largemouth are sitting just off the, the bank in those brush piles. See if that works. But for that, we'll fire the hover rig up there. You can see how many fish are up there. They're going crazy. The hover rig, all I do is just kind of hop it Twitch it, let it fall. Got him. Is this a better, this actually feels like a good one. I don't know what it is. I think it's a striper. I don't think this is a bass. Oh, it's a good bass. Wow, hover rig. Okay. Maybe we do just need to stay here and I just need to pick the hover rig up. Hover rig on a striking caffeine shad. Finally catching the keeper. That dude choked it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh, finally, catching a good one. I guess I shouldn't have left this. I just needed to weed through this area, even there's a bunch of little ones. There's a lot of fish here. Got that on a core tackle hover rig, eighth ounce, with a three out hook and a four inch striking caffeine shad. Finally, put a better quality fish in the boat. Let's get a weight on this guy. This is like a beaver giant right now, guys. Uh, got a scale in here. There's so many fish up there, it's crazy. Can you guys even hear me and see me? Probably. Let me check this. Okay. Wow, an absolute beaver stud, two pounds, four ounces. My goodness, guys. I mean, we are living large right now. Two pound, four ouncer on beaver. What a, what a life to be living. My goodness. Let's get this guy back down there. Fire back out. The hover rig, maybe that's the secret. Maybe I just need to put the little tiny swim bait away, go a little bit bigger bait. The hover rig, all I'm doing is firing that thing out there and that thing glides with that caffeine shad super well, but it gets through those smaller fish because that bait's big enough where those little ones can't get it in their mouth. And so I'm just hopping it and then letting it fall and kind of glide like a dying bait fish and just hop it up, let it fly, glide and fall. And they bite it just like that hair jig, but it catches like, the hair jig usually will catch these same fish too, but for whatever reason, they don't want the hair jig today and they just wanted the hover, so I'll take it. I'm not gonna complain, to be honest, because it's, it's the first decent fish we've had all day. And they're still, I mean, there's a lot of them still up there. It's crazy. Seems like these fish that are further out though, like further out here towards the boat, they're not very aggressive or they're getting spooked by the boat pressure. That was happening earlier too. It seems like the only way I can get these fish to bite is on the end of a very, very long cast. I'm keeping the boat far away from them. I'm not getting right up on top of these fish just to try to avoid spooking them. And just, oh, 
one to smash the hover. Come on. Eat it, fish. They're all just too small to eat it. But there's a good one in there somewhere. Because if there's, if there's one two pounder, there's got to be like five two pounders. Not that that's something to like write home about, but on beaver some days, five two pounders will go a very long way. Oh, he came up and swirled on that thing. Come on, fish. <laughs> They're going crazy. Uh, these fish are hitting it like nobody's business. They're just uh, too small. Watching them swirl on it as it hits the water. Got him. Not a giant, but a little bit better quality than average. This was the trick, the hover. I mean, it's better, better size than, I mean, I know it's not a keeper, but on average, the hover rig fish have been a little bit better quality than those tiny dinky spotted bass we've been catching, which is a good sign. Not a keeper though. It's gonna keep firing up there. I'm kind of, I'm just spot locked. I'm not even like live scoping up there. Just kind of set up on this point, catching them. Oh, came off. He had me kind of, took me by surprise on that one. That was not, another, not a keeper. It was another like same size as that last little fish. Two pounder or a pound, pound one pounder. Not a two pounder, not a keeper. But they're up there. Let's see what else we can see. I mean, there's <laughs> there are fish all over. That's what you can see on the live scope. You can just see them. They're going crazy up there. There's so many fish. It's unreal. The further you get up on top of that point, though, right now. That's where you're getting the bites. The fish that are off the point, which is maybe a good sign for some of those spots I was fishing earlier too around the corner that we may still have cell signal on, is that I might have needed to be fishing further up on top of those points. I was targeting those fish that were further off the points and I might need to be going up further, like higher up on the point. That might be where those fish are, the active fish are. There's a lot of fish kind of out just roaming. And I've been trying to fish for those all day or the morning and a lot of times it's those small little things. You can be around the fish, but it's something about getting the right bait and then knowing like having to fire way up on top of the point in the shallowest water and getting a bait that works in that real shallow water. You kind of have to hit both right sometimes to make it work. Now I did lose that last fish, which could kind of make the school act funky. So we may have to let these fish rest for a second or try it from a different angle, but there are more fish around this corner that we might be able to take advantage of. I don't think this is the only sweet spot on this point. So we might be able to do that, switch angle on them, or we might be able to, it looks like I've seen some fish blowing up on the back side of that point over there too. Oh, there's some right here. I'm about to get bit. I think there's some right here too. We'll see. Yeah, we're gonna Oh come on fish. Oh come on fish. Come on. Got him. Littlest guy got it. Little spot. Yeah, they're definitely positioned further up on top of this deal, uh, like way up on top of that point, in like probably three to five foot of water, which is kind of interesting. And this hover, I think, is is helping because it just kind of slowly sinks down through there. 
and they want to be way up on top of these points, like a lot shallower. Maybe, I think it's probably because the cloud cover. The last time I was out here, I was catching them deeper, but we didn't have all this much, this much cloud cover. It was definitely sunnier, which is pushing the fish deeper. Probably could catch him on the top water too right now, which would be kind of fun, but I do like throwing the hover rig a lot, to be honest. Oh, they're going crazy right here. It's interesting, these fish that are just randomly schooling out here further out on the sides of the points, it's a lot harder to get those fish to bite when they come up busting. The, oh, I say that and then I got one. It's definitely easier to get them to bite when they're like positioned up on top of the point or something. We're really weeding through a lot of them. Here's a keeper spot. It's number two on the day if we were doing a, a tournament. A little 12 inch spot. Ooh, I need a new bait here. Show you what I'm doing on the, the big camera. I'll grab out my uh, deal and show you that. Oh, there's crawfish. This is cool. Okay, this might be a deal. This is interesting. Uh, let me show you this too. So this is very interesting. If you look right here, you can see that we have a little crawfish. If I switch this actually. go. A little crawfish pincer that these fish are spitting up, which is interesting. And these fish just are up real shallow. And I think there's fish that are feeding on the crawfish, but they're also feeding on the shad. They're feeding on both. But basically, I got a little core tackle hover rig here, eighth ounce, three-aught hook. I'm going to just rig it on a four-inch strike king caffeine shed. This is a caffeine shed junior. And I caught a bunch of fish on this before I had to change. I cut off the cable guard just to increase hookup ratio because I'm not fishing around the brush or anything. I'm just going to feed that hover rig together right there. Bam. That is a juicy little deal, especially when these fish are just setting up offshore here on these points and stuff. Uh, a little bit shallower. They are just getting up there. You can see them all over the live scope. They're going crazy on this point. I got up a little bit high on this point. To be honest, probably should back off a little bit. The wind blowing, it's blowing me in. But they're not deeper. Makes me wonder if there's fish up, like actually up in those bushes up there versus just being out off this point. It does make me wonder that. Those bushes are very shallow right now. They were definitely more bushes in the water <clears throat> like last week, they've been pulling the lake down really heavy. It's been it's been high all spring. Oi. Come on, fish, don't do that. We don't want you on the carpet. But these fish are real shallow up on the edge of that point. Got them. It's a decent fish. Now the keeper, uh, did he, what did he just spit up? He spit up something, he spit up a shad. Fish, got mud on the bottom of them. They're literally dirt shallow. They are definitely shallower than I have been fishing. These cloud cover or something must have those fish pushed up. I mean, they're in the mud up there and they're, the hover rig is the perfect bait for them right now. And those fish are up there that shallow. Oh, gosh. It works out pretty well, too, because, like, not all these, I mean, not every little fish is eating it. I'm definitely, I mean, I'm not catching good ones, but I'm not catching the six inches like I was on the little 2.8 Kitek. Yeah, all I'm doing with this thing, I mean, it's not, ah, come on, fish. Got him. Very little. Just weeding through them. Eventually, you're, there's got to be a good one. Or a little Kentucky. Just working that thing nice and easy on the edge of that, that point. 
and they're just up there crushing it. I mean, the hover rig guys, I'm telling you, this thing is ju the juice. Hover rig is the juice, and if you have not picked up a hover rig, I would highly recommend it. I would just put it that way. Because it flat out catches them. It catches good ones too. It doesn't just catch little ones. Oh, that one jumped off. There's catches good ones, catches little ones, catches everything in between. But yeah, it it's freaking legit, guys. You just watch me catch them almost every single cast off the spot. I'm gonna switch back over to this scene. Uh, see here I think we're getting this going okay man oh hover rig dude I'm telling you coretackle.com just go buy a hover rig try it put a fluke on it put a, a senko on it put anything on it it doesn't really matter it just needs to be a bait that the hook fits into and they just eat it they really really just eat it and this is the heavier size I probably could get away with throwing the lighter one and they would eat it too I like the heavier size myself like the heavier size myself, because I mean, these fish, or this bait doesn't sink that fast, even with the, I mean, this bait is falling at like maybe half a foot a second with an eighth ounce and this striking caffeine shad four inch. So it's not like it's like sinking like a rock. It's not a Demiki rig or anything. It hovers, it literally hovers and glides through the water very, very slow. And these fish just aren't used to seeing something like that, that Usually they'll see like a weightless fluke that's way up on the surface or there's some, something like a swim bait. This is in between like a swim bait and like a, a weightless fluke and they just can't stand it, guys. So, yeah. You can go, you can go buy them at coretackle.com, the hover rig. Pretty legit. I don't know what's going on with this point, though, why there's so many fish up here and why they're all so small. Um, but on beaver, when you're catching fish, Honestly, I'm happy. Um, <laughs> I am happy. I, I do want to go try to catch a bigger one though here in a minute because we've been going for a bit and I've just been, I mean, we've been smashing them. It's been good. I am going to work a little bit more around this point because I do want to see if I can, oh gosh, I can't even stop. No, that's the first uh, striper I've had on this hover. guy out of here. I don't know if the live stream was like, since it's all busted up, I might just like, I don't know what I'm going to do with the live stream. I don't know if I'm going to take it and like re-edit it or something because I have it recording. So I can maybe re-edit it down and like post it and not do it actually like fully. Up. They're swimming underneath my boat right now. What is happening? There's definitely more fish though. I'm, they're not back in this deal. They're definitely more on the point up here. Uh, there's a lot of them up off this, this, on this point. It's real shallow up here. See, they're kind of just cruising up there. I almost need to take my, I'll take the, I don't know why I have my depth range, so, like, I have it. But there's, I mean, there's a pile of them just up here in this real shallow stuff. And you can see them all over the screen. And they're just cruising up here chasing shad, they're eating crawfish. I mean, it's like a smorgasbord for these fish. You guys can watch the beginning of the stream to see when I graph this. I showed the whole spot. I showed what, what I found on the electronics, all that stuff. So if you guys want to check that out, um, it's there. I didn't just pull up and just start fishing the spot. I graphed it first and, and started catching them. But like, see all these fish just randomly out here? Like, there's a lot of just dudes just chilling out here. But, ooh, that sounds like a good one. But they're not good, they're all just little. Even though they look good, they're not actually good. 30 foot out in front of me here. I have not caught like any of these fish off the live scope. Oh, dude, they're coming after it though. Oh, oh, come on. Dude, they're all over that thing on the live scope right now. They're going crazy. Eat it. They're all little. Eat it. Yeah. 
hit it. But all these fish that I'm seeing on the live scope, I tried really like focusing on the live scope deal of it. They have not been doing that. Like I, it's weird. I've not been able to catch them just live scoping that well. They definitely are more just kind of up on these points and you throw the hover rigs, throw something like that up there and get it in the area and they eat it. And I don't know. I mean, I, I know you can catch them probably live scoping to an extent. I mean, there's fish busting everywhere, but that's not been the deal for me at least. Um, it's definitely been a on the point sort of thing. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work my way a little bit this way just to see if there's any on this side of the point. I don't foresee there being a lot of fish on this side because I didn't see when I graphed it earlier, but I do want to check it. Then we're going to stop fishing this stuff because we caught enough of the little ones and they're, we've caught enough to prove that there's not a lot of good ones on the point. We've had a 14 incher and like a 15 incher. So uh, that's not a great sign. You can see on the live scope, we're not seeing like any activity from fish up on this side of the point like up here. So there was a group that definitely moved up here at this time. <clears throat> and they moved up specifically like right on that spot. It makes me want to go back around the corner to another spot that I was fishing earlier that looks similar. I think the cell signal should be fine over there. I kind of want to go check that first just because the fish might be in like their feeding mode. This might be the time of day when they're really active and I want to check that out. So let's go roll around the corner just really fast. I think the cell signal's fine. And if it gets bad, then we can always uh, come back over here and there's some brush piles to check too. But there was a spot that was loaded up with fish. We just couldn't get them to bite. Now that we have the, the knowledge we have now with the hover rig and up there, maybe we can get those fish to actually come commit. So let's see, but uh, I'm gonna put all this stuff up for a second. And then with our newfound understanding, that's the thing about bass fishing guys. A lot of times you can be doing somewhat the right thing, but it's a bait, it's a how you're presenting on the spot, and it's not gonna just happen overnight where you're just gonna find them and it's just gonna be easy. A lot of times you get on a deal, you think it's not as good as it is, and it turns out to be better. Um, other times, I mean, this didn't turn out to be that good, to be honest. I'll show you what this looks like again on the map. It's literally just a rounded point that sticks out and there's some fish just using it. This spot didn't turn out to be that good. I mean, we didn't catch any like real good ones, but we did catch a couple, you know, one keeper, which is okay. But let's go run around that other point. I think maybe there might be a feeding window happening right now where fish are just getting active and aggressive. And I want to see if I can catch them off those couple points I was graphing earlier that had fish around it that we couldn't get to bite. Then we'll uh, come back in here and try fishing brush piles or something. So both these points here were pretty well covered with fish. I could, I was getting a few to bite. It wasn't great, but there were definitely some fish here. I want to see if I can fish up closer on top of the point like we just did, see if we can re reproduce what we just had happen. It looks like the internet connection is fine-ish. So we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if it's actually working, guys, but we are we're trying. We're trying our best.
little bit breezy out here too. Not seeing near as much activity here as I was on the other point. By any means. Doesn't mean the other one isn't good, but it's definitely, this point was not as good as the other one if I remember. So, but I wanna check it and just kinda of run this deal. Just basically hover raking around these main lake points just to see if there's anything going on. But I'm not seeing a lot of fish up here. I'm gonna, oh, there were mine. I should get off 10 and actually fish here. Little guy. Come on now. Go. Cover rig. They're up there. It's just, it's just running the pattern at this point. I probably should have stuck around here instead of trying to screw around too much. I should have tried to figure out the deal for today on these spots because there's so many fish here. It's just, there's not a lot of big ones. That's the thing that really bugs me about this is, and it's just a time of the year thing, guys. There's more big fish that will be coming. The water's dropping out of these bushes. Just more and more as that goes on, there's gonna be more fish that pull out to this stuff. But right now there's just more small fish and uh, probably not the best way to catch big ones. If I was going to guess, I'm sure there's better ways to go catch big fish right now, like throwing swim bait around up shallow or mag draft or something, especially with the conditions. But uh, I wanted to show off the live scope and all the stuff I'm doing here. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. Our keeper spot here, looks like, maybe not a keeper. Yeah, a keeper. It's a 12 incher. <laughs> not killing the game, but we're, uh, we're at least participating in the game. So, Ooh. see a fish. Sometimes that's better than nothing, just to be a participant in the game more than just killing the game. Man, there's a lot of random fish out here. This spot is loaded with spots. Spotted the bass. Let me move to this other point. I, not seeing a ton of activity up on the live scope up on this deal. There's some fish that are out here deeper, but I'm not really seeing them like, Gangbusters, I'm gonna get up to this next point. I'll let this go while I check the stream and check a couple other things. Okay, we're still good on battery, which is nice. Stream. Uh, why is my live scope so fuzzy? Question. Uh, I don't have the newest transducer on here. Uh, and it's just ghost tree. It's called the ghost tree. It's something happens with the LVS32 transducer. It's just kind of a known thing. Uh, I just haven't gotten the newest live scope transducer. So I'm, I'm running the old one. It's the uh, 32, but the, uh, the 34 gets rid of a lot of that. I just haven't gotten it yet because I don't know. I just didn't really want to spend the money on it because I was spending money getting this live stream set up going. So uh, it was either live stream for you guys and keep the uh, keep this transducer or get the new transducer and not do the live stream. So I picked, you know, you guys, of course, more important than uh, perfectly clear live scope images. And we're doing okay today. We're not, it's not perfect, but we're not sucking. We're catching fish. We probably caught like, well, I, don't, I have no idea how many fish I've caught. Probably caught like over 10 fish on camera. It's not too bad. I caught like four in the first five minutes. So pretty happy with that. I mean, we're out here live, just doing our best, trying not to suck. It's my every day of fishing on the lake, to be honest. Then go to Grand on, uh, going to Grand sometime, probably Thursday. Hoping that'll be a good trip and we actually have some better quality fish offshore. Usually there are, well, there are just more three pounders in Grand than on Beaver and they get offshore a little bit faster. So I'm excited to hopefully get some good footage on Grand offshore, fishing some shallow stuff. 
I don't know about the cell signal. I'm, I need to figure out the cell signal deal, guys, because the cell signal is not the best on a lot of the smaller lakes I have around me. And that's where a lot of the better quality fish are offshore in general. Beaver, you can catch some decent ones. I've caught them on camera, but usually it takes me all freaking day to catch five good ones. And it's just, that's not as, that's not the best uh, content, to be honest. What the heck? I'm on a tree or something. Uh, spending eight hours to catch like two or three good fish is usually not the best content for a live stream. Uh, just because it's a lot of sitting watching me not catch anything, but that's kind of the deal. That's why I wanted to show you a little bit today. I mean, I did a lot of not catching, and I mean, I've caught them pretty well considering, I mean, just given the day. I know a lot of people think I just come out here and just catch them immediately, which is not the case, and I spend a lot of time graphing and not figuring it out, and then figuring it out later, so it's pretty typical. It's just the, the, way, of the, the way of the fish, to be honest. See if there's anything up here that will eat. Some brush and stuff out here that looks there's something. But there's not a lot of, it's crazy because there's not really a lot of fish that are, that other point is just going crazy. And this, this point actually, I was out here last uh, Thursday or something, and this point was going crazy, just like that last point. And just week to week, these fish just change and they're different and it's not, fishing just is never the same two days in a row. You can't get caught up in what you had been doing. Like I, I spent some time trying to fish this thing and just fo focus on doing this and it, like fishing these spots and spots I had been catching them and it did not work at the beginning of the stream. And I just try not to get too caught up in like what has or hasn't, or, oh gosh, there's, come on or hasn't worked there's fish got them i'll do that pile decent one too hover rig out of the pile he choked that thing it's another keeper right there i think oh my gosh look how he ate that oh he's pooping on. these fish just love pooping on me today he absolutely that's not a keeper i don't think let me wash him off actually before i show you he's got poop all over him Oh, there we go. He's also bleeding a little bit. I'm gonna cut the hook out. He, I mean, he choked that bait. I was gonna cut the hook, grab the plastic out, and uh, get him back in the lake as fast as I can. Let me see here. Cut the line. He choked that thing to the point where I can't, I don't think I can get the hook out without, no, I can't. I'm gonna grab the plastic out at least, so we don't have that down his throat. Pliers, where are you? Here we go. Okay, and he's back. Got the plastic out of him. Let him have the hover rig, it's fine. He can have one of those. He'll get that out of the system here in a bit. We didn't do too much damage to him. Let me re-rig with the hover. And our four inch caffeine shad. Hover rig is the deal today, guys. I, uh, I was not throwing it earlier that much. And it seems like that is the bait for sure that they want. I was trying to throw a bunch of other stuff. And a lot of times it just comes down to the bait. And it's funny because I had the hover rig tied on and I wasn't even throwing it, uh, which is kind of silly. And I threw everything else. Now that I'm thinking back on it, I threw everything except the hover rig at these fish. And this is what they wanted today. So sometimes, you know, you can be really close to hitting the deal. I was on these spots earlier and I want to go hit this other, there's a brush pile over here that I fished earlier that had a bunch of fish on it and that uh, I didn't catch one on. And I think if I hover it, I might be able to catch a fish there. These are not big ones, but I mean, that was a decent large mouth. It wasn't, you know, I don't even think, it may have not been a keeper. It probably was like a 14 and a quarter incher, but it was, uh, 
a better largemouth, and it was out of one of these deeper brush piles, and they wouldn't really come up and get that um, swim bait earlier, but they will come get the hover over the top of the pile. So that is an interesting little discovery. Let's keep rolling though, get back over there. Man, I'm covered in fish blood and striper poop. What a day, what a day. Well, I get back up here, I know there's been a bunch of drama about people fishing out of people's spots, and hole poaching and all kinds of stuff. There's gonna be a good Bass Talk Live tomorrow with Milliken and, and Matt Pangrak. It's gonna be interesting. And uh, just my two cents on the whole poaching and, and fishing out of people's spots. Man, I've had my spots quote unquote poached by guys for years just because I was offshore fishing a long time before it became like super mainstream. And people just, oh, they're all coming up to eat the hover. Come on, eat it. Oh my gosh, they're all over it. Eat it, fish. Come on. How many of you do you need to stare at it before you just choke it? There's some good ones on it, too. Eat it. Oh my goodness. Look at them all. There's so many. My bait's right in the center of them all. How are they not eating it? I'm very confused on that. Let me fire back over there. Anyways, what I was just saying is that I've had my holes poached for years by people. And what I mean by poach is like, I find a spot that no one else is fishing. I have never seen anyone fishing out there for years on these certain lakes. And then these guys are on the spot fishing right after I leave. And I just got used to it. It's not that big of a deal to me. Oh gosh, darn it, come on. This is the deal on these brush piles, guys, to get these fish to bite. They, I don't know what the deal is. I don't know why that fish didn't get it. There's some decent ones on these piles. Anyways, oh gosh, what's happening? Oh, that's what happened. He had the cable guard. For whatever reason, this cable guard today, they've, the, I, I need to cut the cable guard off this deal. Sometimes it helps it come through brush, but sometimes it just hurts your hookup ratio. So I cut the cable guard off the hover rig a lot. We're thinking about coming out with a non-cable guard version in the future here. So it does, it's not on there. That actually just cost me a fish, which is really annoying. But if I didn't have the cable guard on there, I would have caught that one. That was a freaking good one too, I think. Uh, but yeah, the hover rig, all I'm doing is firing that thing out there, letting it sink down to over this brush pile super slow. And these fish are actually coming up to it as it's falling getting interested in it because it falls so slow and they're getting all over it, which is cool to see. It's a little bit tricky to see on the, the live scope right now, but they're very excited about it. It's in them right now. Come on fish, come eat it. There's a bunch of them just staring at it. Okay, so what I was getting to is, I'm pretty used to getting having people come up and poaching me and stuff like that. Um, but, I mean, that's just part of fishing, and I feel like my opinion on the whole matter is that you can't let that stuff get to you. People are going to do what they're going to do, and if people drive over your spot, if they're not respectful or whatever, I don't want to let someone control my day by them doing something that's maybe not what I would do. So what I always try to do is just ignore it, and if people do it to me, I just don't reciprocate. I just smile, move on, find new fish. And I always fish better when I'm not getting in a bad mindset of saying, all oh, these people are messing with my fish or this or that is going wrong. I mean, fishing's such a mental game. You're out here by yourself for eight hours at a time at times, trying to figure out what the fish are doing. And it's hard enough to compete against the fish, but if you're also competing against everyone else that's on the lake and trying to get into arguments and all kinds of stuff, it's just gonna affect you in a negative way and affect your mental state, your fishing. So just, I don't know, I would recommend not worrying about it so much and just go find more fish, learn how to find fish so you can adapt if someone messes with you and just, I don't know, just not get so worried about it. Cause you know, all you're doing is hurting yourself I feel like by getting worked up about it. Wow, there, I mean, there's so many fish just sharking the bait right now. My hover rig is getting bullied and swarmed and they are not eating it. I don't know why. 
that first largemouth came out and crushed it. It's almost like after I caught that first fish, those fish calmed down or they got like spooky a little bit, which is fine. Uh, I'm gonna move on and I'm, I might come back. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna have time on the stream. I would come back and refish this brush pile if I was fishing later. And honestly, I need to go back and refish all the brush piles I've been finding and just hover them because it seems like it's possible to catch these fish doing that. Um, just throwing the hover rig around these piles and I think there's a couple more brush piles up here I've marked off this point. I'm gonna check those real quick, then we'll check the other brush pile that was back there we fished at the beginning of the day and try to hover that and see if that works. Cause that, we may have kind of solved the puzzle just a little bit. At least we found the bait that they want. Let's see where this, uh, brush pile, there's a brush pile up here. We'll make our way over to this brush pile over here. Rolling up to the next one. I don't know why this striking caffeine chat is by far my favorite bait on this hover rig when I'm fishing offshore. I've tried like everything on it, but that little four inch caffeine chad, striking caffeine chad, gets me the most bites. I catch the most fish on it, the most quality, and like by far on that hover rig, it's my favorite bait. It has a flat bottom, it doesn't spiral too bad on the hook, and it just works really well. So, yeah, that if I had to pick one bait to go fish on the eighth ounce hover. I would fish the Striking Caffeine Chad Junior. It's pretty legit on it, to be honest. You see me wearing them out on it today. We're gonna roll fish this brush pile, fish another brush pile in a second. I'll show you how I line up on that brush pile and all that stuff, and then we'll, uh... there we go. See if they actually want the hover. It's falling down there. I don't think it made a long enough cast. Probably didn't. Oh. Did I get too close on this thing somehow? Oh, I did. Dang it. I got way too close on this thing. Didn't see it until later. I'm only 40 foot away. That's not ideal. My bait's falling down to him, though. Okay, those are the fish I probably need to be casting at. Those look more like bass. And I'm also not on top of them. That's far enough. Yeah, my bait's falling down to them. Come on, fish. They're not streaking up to come get it, which is not the best sign that they're very interested. <laughs> they're all just kind of chilling there. <laughs> a lot of times when fish are interested in a bait, they're gonna come streak up and try to like actually eat it. These fish are like very uninterested from the look of it. They're just kind of sitting there. So I'm not gonna mess with them for too much. <laughs> Or not, I'm not gonna mess with them any. I'm just leaving because that's kind of crazy. They just like, when you see them on the live scope and they want it, they will shoot up like crazy off from the top of the brush to come eat the, the hover. And honestly, you're gonna get bit on your first cast with that hover on one of these spots like 90% of the time. So if they don't bite it in the first cast, just don't worry about it. We're gonna run and hit another pile real quick. Um, I'll just leave that view on and I'll show you how I line up on this deal.
Okay, I'm gonna roll past this brush, try to get like 100 foot past it. I got my range ring set to 100 feet. And then I know the boat's gonna drift when I get off because the wind's blowing pretty good. So I got on the other side of these piles and uh, now I'm pretty much right where I need to be. I maybe got a little bit close to him. I came in a little bit hot. I'm trying to get excited and just go. See if I can put more fish in the boat. It's funny because I fished all this stuff earlier, guys. And it, like you saw me fish, or if you guys have been watching this whole time, you probably haven't because the stream's been kind of buggy. But if you're still here and this is still here, you will have watched me graph that point earlier. And I didn't catch anything on either of those points. And now I'm pulling back up on a lot of this stuff and I'm catching them with the hover. And it's very interesting because it's like, it's not like these spots weren't good. It's just a lot of times it's a timing deal where I hit the spot maybe when it wasn't the right feeding window, maybe I just didn't have the right bait like we've talked about. There's a bunch of reasons why you don't catch fish on a spot, but regardless, we're here now. We're trying to make it happen, so. Fish on that pile right there. Let's see if we can actually get over to him. <laughs> you can see those fish there. These might be crappie. I think one of these piles had crappie in it from what I could see, and then one of them had, uh, one of my baths. I don't know which one is which, but we're gonna fire them both and see. Those fish did not react to my hover coming by them, literally at all. They just, all just sat there. It's not a great sign. I'm right in the middle of them, and they're just completely indifferent. So, we are moving on. There's another little pile over here. Yeah, he's so weird. Some of these fish are like super aggressive and the other fish are just like, eh, I don't give a crap about your bait. And uh, that's fine. You just don't mess with them for too long then. You don't, you don't sit there and cast and cast and cast at them if they're not going to come up and just shark your bait, which is what I want to see them do. I want to see them come up off the bottom or up off the area they're on and come and shark my bait. Come try to come get it. I'm all screwed up here. What did I do? These fish are not interested, it looks like, either in the hover because it's right down in their grill. They are just uninterested. So, let's move on. Let's roll back uh, into that creek where we started. And I want to check a couple of brush piles in there, see if there's any better quality fish that are setting up like actually in brush. I'll check that real fast. Am I even still streaming? We have no idea. sound the best.
Okay, so I've had some comments. Are we back? I think we're back. Um, we're trying at least. Let's see here. Trying real hard to make this work, but I don't think it is. So, okay. Um, let's see here. Um, Okay, we're kind of back, sort of, not really. But I think I'm probably done for the day. I tested out this connection. It's not been the best. Uh, I learned some stuff doing this on the water live stream. I'll probably try to save down the video. My computer completely crashed that I'm using it for this. And I probably lost the actual recording of this, which is very annoying. So the only recording we're gonna have is the YouTube recording, which is all kind of not the best anyway. So who knows what's gonna happen? Maybe I'm not even gonna keep this up on the channel but anyways hopefully you guys who were here enjoyed if you were able to even catch some of it thanks for bearing with me through this uh, test and we're going to try our best again maybe in the future if I can figure out a better way to do internet or, or something but anyways we'll see how it looks on YouTube after I get home and hopefully it wasn't terrible but thanks for staying with me this whole time uh, shout out to Bridgeford Foods for giving me a good snack while I'm out here on the lake idling and hanging out with you guys for a little bit I'm gonna keep fishing though, cause I mean, I still got some time before I have to head in for the day and uh, I'm gonna try to catch some more. And if I catch something, I'm gonna have these other cameras on and I can at least show you guys in another video if I figure out how to get something with the hover rig going or uh, just whatever I can find. So we'll see you guys hopefully here in the next video and maybe on our live stream soon if I can get this all worked out. Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see y'all next one.